Hey everybody, it's Eric with Low VA Rates. I'm wearing red because it's Friday and here at Low VA Rates on Friday, we like to remember everyone deployed. You can follow along by wearing red also on Friday, go into some social media, Instagram, Facebook, put a picture of yourself or your family wearing red, hashtag Red Friday, tag at Low VA Rates. We can send you some of your own swag. But more importantly than our red swag is, we love our veterans. Thank you for your service. If you're deployed, please return safely. Um, today for our Red Friday video, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to the video down here on the right of your screen, you probably already missed it. So you might have to rewind a little bit, go back and hit that subscribe button. Today we're gonna talk about VA assumptions. Now you may say, wait a second, we are talking about VA assumptions. Well, I'm gonna explain that, okay? We're gonna get into VA assumptions today. One of the little discussed benefits of the VA home loan program is the fact that VA loans can be assumed or they're assumable. If you've probably seen on your closing documents, if you've got a VA loan or if you've had one in the past, you'll see, notice, this loan is assumable. That's on a lot of the documents. Um, but you might not know what that means. So we're gonna help you understand this um, by going over it a little bit. How assumptions work, what there are, what the pitfalls of doing them are, we're gonna get into all that. So what is a VA assumption? Basically, if you decide that you need to get out of your mortgage, get out of your home, you could have someone else come in and assume your loan. Notice I didn't say sell your house. Sometimes you can't sell your house quick enough. You gotta go quick. You can have someone come in and assume. And what that basically means is they're taking the financial and legal responsibility for your mortgage, for the mortgage payment and you assign all the debt that's on your home over to their name. So when another veteran assumes your loan, then they take that loan on as is, which means basically they keep the loan balance, they keep the interest rate, they keep the monthly payment, they just assume the responsibilities. This is different than if you were to sell them your home outright and they went out and got their own separate VA purchase loan. So in this situation, they'd be starting over from scratch with a loan amount based on your home's appraised value, what you sold it for, they would be getting interest rates at that time in, 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 in history, um, they'd be looking at their credit history and they'd be looking at their new interest rates. And basically when you sell them a house, they're going out on their own and they're getting their own loan. Okay, but on an assumption, lenders are no longer required to grant VA loan assumptions. We don't, we don't have to if we don't want to. Okay, instead, whether or not we want to allow a loan to be assumed, that's up to our discretion. However, if the lender does approve the loan assumption, the following conditions are gonna have to be met. So let's talk about these conditions real quick. The loan must be current, okay? The loan must be current and paid up, it means it cannot be behind um, or you're not gonna get approved for, for the assumption. The person assuming your loan, so if I'm the veteran and I want you know, a friend from high school or college to come in and take over my loan for me and assume it, well, then he's gonna have to um, meet the same financial and credit standards that I had to when I got the house. So VA credit and financial standards must be met. We've talked about those in many other videos. Okay, you can't just come in there with horrible credit, and no money, and say, hey, I wanna assume this guy's loan, so let me, okay? They must also be willing to assume all mortgage obligations. Basically, if you have second mortgage on the house, they're gonna to have to assume that second mortgage also, or any other mortgages that might be tied to the property. If they're gonna assume the VA loan, they gotta assume all of them. Now, the person assuming the loan is also gonna to have to pay a half point VA funding fee. Now, if a half point VA funding fee sounds familiar to you, that's the funding fee charged on a streamline. It's the same funding fee, 0.5, if you're going to assume the loan. 0.5% VA funding fee has to be paid to the VA. A processing fee is also gonna to have to be paid. There's a $300 processing fee. There is an R in there, I promise. There's a $300 processing fee, um, plus the cost of a credit report because we're gonna to wanna to look at your credit or whatever lender's gonna allow you to assume, have someone assume the loan, they're gonna to wanna to look at that. And generally speaking, this processing fee and the credit report fee are gonna to have to be paid in advance. Now, if you've been able to meet all of these conditions 
and the lender that you're working with has approved the assumption, then you're gonna finally move on to kind of like processing like you would a normal loan. Okay, now if the lender or servicer has automatic authority, which we've talked about before, then we can go in because we have automatic authority and we can determine through kind of an underwriting process, just like if we were doing a loan, we can determine if the person that you want to assume the loan meets our credit standards, is credit worthy, and has the ability to assume your debt. Uh, normally, there's about 30 days to do this, um, and then we're gonna notify you of your decision. Or, sorry, not of your decision, of our decision. If the lender you're working with does not have automatic authority, we've got videos on why you should work with lenders with automatic authority, like low VA rates, then they've got 21 days, a little bit less time, to submit the documents directly to the VA. And then the VA is gonna complete their required review within 14 days. Okay, so it's a little bit more timely if you're going through a lender that is not an automatic authority lender. Once the lender or the servicer is notified of the VA's decision, then what they're going to do is they're gonna let you know within the next week whether or not they can do it. After the assumption's approved, either by the servicer or by the VA, then you must also request and receive a mortgage liability release. This is a form that you're going to get from your lender or servicer, and you're gonna to have to execute that form. If you don't get the release in writing, your credit could be negatively impacted if the person who's assuming your loan ends up defaulting. Could you imagine going through this whole process? Your buddy comes in, he assumes the loan, you don't get this release form signed, and then he walks away from the house and destroys your credit, would not be a good situation. Keep in mind, I think I've mentioned this earlier in the video, but the person assuming your loan does not have to be a veteran or a service member. It can be anyone, any civilian out there. Let's talk about the benefits, however, of the VA loan assumptions. When, when rates are rising, which they're not right now, but it, fast forward, COVID's gone, the economy starts roaring back, and the Fed starts raising rates. We don't think that's gonna happen until sometime around 2022. But assume for a moment, hence how I use the word assumption, assume, did you guys catch that? Assume for a moment that interest rates are rising, okay? If that's happening, the ability for someone to go out and assume your loan that you locked in in 2020 down in the low twos, man, that's huge. If someone's buying a home in 2022, 2023, 2024, they might be up in the fours or fives again. They don't get approved for that because the interest rate's too high, but they come in and they assume your loan down there in the twos. That's super attractive and can make you getting out of your mortgage in your house much faster and much more attractive to someone that's looking to buy. Assuming a loan also means that a buyer can avoid all those closing costs and other fees that we've got videos on. They can just get into the house, brand new house to them, and save thousands of dollars in closing costs. Now, for another veteran, they can save on the funding fee also, because if they're going to purchase a home for the first time, as we've mentioned, they're gonna pay like 2.3% in a funding fee. On a $100,000 loan, that's 2,300 bucks. However, if they're assuming, if a veteran is assuming your loan, remember it's only 0.5, that's $500. If another veteran assumes your loan, they can also substitute their entitlement for yours, which allows your entitlement to be fully restored so you can go out and buy a new home. Keep in mind, if you let a civilian come in and assume your loan, your entitlement is encumbered until they get out of that mortgage that they assumed from you. Keep that in mind. So we've already sort of mentioned this, but if you don't get the signed release of liability, your credit has the potential to be negatively impacted. So guys, here's the deal. Having a VA mortgage that's assumable is huge because it allows other people to come in and assume your loan, take all of your responsibility, your financial responsibility away from you and make it theirs. And that has the potential to give you a lot of financial benefits. But before you go just saying, hey, I want someone to you know, assume my loan, make sure you talk to a mortgage professional, watch this video two or three times, do some research on Google, get a hold of low VA rates. We can help you when it's time to make that determination whether or not you should sell your house the normal standard way, or allow someone to come in and assume your loan. Thanks for watching. Hopefully that was a topic that you now know much more about. We'll see you next week. Hopefully you're wearing red. I know I will be. Thanks for watching today.